let's talk AMC before we get that cracking uh, up in here. Uh, so uh, I noticed you already are stocked and loaded, uh, ready to take a victory shot. Uh, AMC, we, we just crossed a major yeah, level of support and resistance at $10. This was what we were rejected at in pre-market and a couple of days ago. Uh, 11.18 is the next level to beat. And, uh, and we are looking pretty good in terms of momentum. A lot of volume, 70, almost 72 million in volume for AMC. What are you thinking? What? Uh, luckily, you got in before the crazy rise today so i think you're already 10 percent up on the position you just bought right oh yeah big time this is this has been crazy this is the first time i've seen some green in amc for probably about a month <laughs> it's a good <laughs> feeling i uh, i loaded uh, i locked and loaded i held true to our promise you know i hit 150 thousand subs and i bought another two and a half thousand dollars of amc this morning uh, i think they got filled at 942 so i'm pretty happy with that i'm pretty happy right now we're sitting at 1048 um and as you said the level of resistance we're watching for is right around 11 bucks so We've got like a uh, quadruple top at 1104, 1110, somewhere around there. So that's going to be the next huge level of resistance. A push over that is going to be monumental because the next level of resistance beyond 11 bucks is a lot higher. It's 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 way different. You're looking at 12 and a half to 14 dollars. I mean, that's just uh, that's a game changer. I think once this crosses over 11 bucks, it's going to be lights out. People are going to start flocking back to this. The hype is going to be unreal. The FOMO is going to be unreal. It's uh, This is a beautiful technical setup, and it really, really helps. You touched upon this earlier in the, in the live stream, but the NASDAQ, the market in general, super green right now, which is a game changer because when, when people are trying to get into a stock for a swing trade, for a squeeze, whatever it might be, uh, they're going to be afraid to get the rug pulled out from underneath them if the market's not holding up. And the market being green, people really having that fear in the back of their minds so that's a game changer i love it for sure man it's a good day <laughs> it is a good day uh, it's good to hear your laugh too uh people t tell us that we're too mushy gushy but uh, honestly i just appreciate your energy uh <laughs> um but one of the things i wanted to note is that well uh, wh while we give uh, gme a little bit of lo love as well i just reached a new high of 246.35 up another 24 percent on the day a couple of people were talking about uh amc uh taking its time yesterday and gme out uh on a, like a crazy ben bender, just bulldozing past a couple of resistance levels. Uh, what is going to happen if they try to squeeze at the same time? Are people going to divert their attentions? Or like people mentioned, wouldn't it be better if one tried to squeeze first and then another tried to squeeze? Can we control yeah, these the, guys? The, the latter, man, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. So at this point, GameStop and AMC, their charts have diverged. They're not doing the same thing anymore. Sometimes you'll see AMC ripping while GameStop's pulling back and then vice versa. And I think there's a little bit of FOMO going on. So people are like, man, I made the wrong choice by getting into AMC instead of GameStop, but you're looking at it all wrong. These are both great stocks with great short squeeze potential for different reasons, right? So GameStop is moving away from the brick and mortar. They've got the potential to go e-commerce. So, you know, this squeeze is gonna allow them to raise some capital so they can actually become a good long-term investment down the road. AMC, different game. It's, uh, it's got different numbers. We've got different, you know, outstanding public float. You've got a different amount of favorites it delivers, different amount of synthetic shares. You've got different short interest. You've got different utilization. In fact, I think that AMC has actually greater utilization. It's sitting at 100% according to Ortex. I mean, I see you paying attention to the numbers, man. You know it. You know what's, uh, what's sitting with all these. And it's not like one's better than the other. It's just a matter of which happens when. So uh, I'm, I'm pumped for it, man. I'm pumped. I, I think you're, you're definitely spot on the money when you say it'd be a good thing to see them squeeze at different times. Yes, that's for sure. Um, I am going to try and catch up to the supers that as they go one at a time. Rosa Deza says both of you should do an AMC earnings together tomorrow. Does that sound good over on your channel, bud? What time are you thinking? Uh, any time, any time, up to you. So I'll I'll likely work from nine in the morning until about eleven. I'd have another uh, hour and a half lunch break, so I can hop in at that point. You heard it right there. It's going to be uh, a lunch break right around eleven uh, Eastern time, right? Uh, Central Standards. Uh, All right. I think that would be. Oh God, I'm not good with numbers. Math isn't my thing, which is <laughs> which is really bad <laughs> since I invest in the market. But um, eleven is uh, nine yeah. a.m. my time. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Nine a.m. your time. All right, You're you spot on. <laughs> uh, mental math. Quick math. Yeah, that makes it look like a like a total weeb. See, this is what I'm saying. I'm just a regular weeb. Just a regular weeb. Like 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 stocks, man. Uh, I love that attitude. Uh, Derek Miller says, not a dead cat. I think one of your mods is in here too, uh, and they just said oh, yeah. hi. Uh, Connor Beyond. Baird. Yeah, John, that's right. Uh, and uh, crack of Kraken for cracking $10? Kachiga Kachinga? Uh, crack of Kraken? Yeah, why not? Why not? It's 5 we'll o'clock somewhere. Roll. I'm on my lunch break. <laughs> we were seeing it here. I, I chugged a beer on Sunday. Uh, Dude, that's the move. Guys. I'll tell you what. This is uh, one of the things that I like to do, Andrew, when I when I take a, take a pull of anything, is I, I like to give a toast, a cheers. 
And my toast and cheers is going to be today to your channel, man, because you grind like nobody I've ever seen. Like you were live streaming, what, yesterday or two days ago for seven straight hours. Yes. I have never done that. That's intense, man. So this toast, this cheers is to the success of your YouTube channel, man. You keep grinding. You keep putting in that time. Keep doing the work. You are going to be a six-figure uh, where, you know, you're going to get that check mark by your name. I wish you nothing but the best, man. So this is for you. Thank you. Big cheers to that. Oh my God. I'm getting, I don't know what to say. I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> no, nah, man, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. I'll tell you what. I was a, I started my channel in December of 2020, December 16th. Wow. And it took me 20 days to get my first hundred subscribers. It took me about 10 days to get to a thousand. So about wow. a month to get to that thousand mark, a little bit longer. Um, and it, we got to here. You are, you're beating me. You're beating me. Your rate of growth is insane. And you're getting that every single day. So just keep grinding, man. Keep putting in the work. And you're going to get paid back. I appreciate that so much. Well, I, honestly, so back in, back in the day, if I can have 10 seconds and talk about my path, I started a data's day, data's day on father's day in 2020. So I started, uh, gosh, like eight months before or actually like six to eight months before. And uh, I just could not get 100 subscribers. It took so long to get up to 1,000. And I was hovering around 1,000 in like November. Uh, and that was a slow, slow grind up to 2,000, but then exponential from there, baby. And Trey was a big part of that from, uh, from 20,000, 25. That was a big part when I was able to come onto your show and we hit that 25 right there. That was crazy. Dude, it's a game changer. Everybody needs a little bit of help, you know? And uh, I went on Brian Jung's live stream. I'm not sure if you know who he is. Mm -hmm. um, and he helped me out immensely. I think that day I went up like 25,000 subscribers. Like that was what kickstarted my channel. So if I can do anything to return the favor to people, you know, you're a good dude and I can tell you put in work. So you deserve it. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. Well, Brian, do you ever talk to him anymore? Yeah, man. We shoot text back and forth probably once a week or so. Uh, he's, he's really going in hard on the NFTs. He's trying to find the next thing after AMC is over. So uh, I'm pretty excited for what's to come for him. He's a, he's a good guy. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. He's uh, very down to earth. I think he took a little break because AMC, uh, he kind of got some flack for the AMC thing, the paper hands, whatever. Some people accused him of selling out. So he just needed to step away for a minute. And that's totally cool. Very nice. Um, well, I would love to talk to Brian Jung. Maybe we'll make part of, part of that stonk symposium. Ray Anthony Joaquin says, uh, I currently have two times Two of AMC contracts, 312 at 13 average, uh, 1.67. Not financial advice. Do you think there's still a chance for a profit? You think that's going to be $13? The $13 uh, strike? Yeah. Expiring on March 19th, huh? I'd say that he's got a pretty good chance. I mean, I, personally, you've done more research uh, on the quadruple witching than I have. I think that you're going to see a pretty slow and steady ride up to that quadruple witching date. I mean, you're going to have some days where maybe it's flat. Maybe it's down 1 or 2 or 3%. But I think... Overall, trend-wise, you're just gonna keep it. You're gonna see it keep climbing up until that uh, that quadruple witching day, because that's on a lot of people's calendars. And you probably, I'd like to hear your opinion on this. I really, pl I think that institutions planned for that day, man. Like they they timed it literally <laughs> to a T, the exact day where FTDs will line up with that date, where all these these futures, these indexes, the options would all expire on that 19th date. Uh, I'd well, I, I think you're gonna be good. I think I would hold it for now especially with what's going on. I mean, AMC is looking like it's going to cross $11 within the next hour or so. I think right now it's sitting at, let me double check. It was 1060 something just a second ago. Oh yeah. We pulled back just up here. hit a new high. So yeah, right now it's sitting at 1059. I mean, you can't beat that. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's freaking gold, man. 1065 high, high of the day. And if it just keeps grinding, grinding, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to keep doing what it's doing. So Volume is great today. This is great volume. Yes, and volume is king out here. Now, just now, just maybe I misspoke, but just uh, for uh, poops and giggles, what do you think about uh, hitting a 13 strike price at this Friday on the 12th? Because that was oh, actually the 12th. I thought you said the 19th, man. My bad, my bad. It's possible. Um, I mean, personally, I would hold off since we're in a bullish trend right now. There's a lot of volume pumping into this, and that's kind of a ball that feeds itself, right? So that as that continues to roll downhill, it continues to you know gain more traction. Uh, I don't see any reason to believe that now is the time to sell, especially since it's still picking up steam. I mean, we're near the high of the day right now, and it's been really, really clean price action. I mean, it's just been consistently growing for the last two hours. So I would I would continue to hold it, and then if you have the opportunity to you know sell that at least you know, break even or maybe even a little bit up. Why not? You know, that's, that'd be my opinion. That's a, that's a great opinion right there. Uh, Manolia Rose says, Gorilla Girl here. Love seeing you guys together. Own AMC and a D, a GME, I'm assuming. Uh, a shout out to the Diamond Hands family. Big shout out there. Thank you so much. Uh, you know what it is. I've got my one share of GameStop, man. <laughs> my one share. It's uh, rocking. It, Cooking with Crisco. And I think you bought that uh, at like, 
was like not triple digits, right? You bought it be below a hundred dollars. One hundred and ten, I think. One hundred ten okay. bucks, about. Oh, I'm up uh, one hundred two percent on it. Uh, that is a good number to be for any investment at any time, even if it's one stock of GME. <laughs> yeah, now, now I wish I'd bought more to be honest, but and it's, I don't know. To be real with you, I have I have no regrets. Like I I thoroughly thoroughly believe in AMC's cause, and I mean I think it's truly going to squeeze. This is the huge stake in my portfolio. I've got 2,300 shares in this and I'm just going to keep buying because I, I just think that uh, the squeeze is solid. So you're not going to go wrong either way. GameStop and both AMC are going to treat you pretty dang well. I, I think you're not going to find better squeeze opportunities in the market than these two stocks, especially with all the hype and attention they get, you know?